everyone, Evie here, the Greek Goddess of Great Reading. Today I'm reviewing The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Achilles, the best of all the Greeks, son of the cruel sea goddess Thetis and the legendary king Peleus, is strong, swift, and beautiful, irresistible to all who meet him. Patroclus is an awkward young prince, exiled from his homeland after an act of shocking violence. Brought together by chance, they forge an inseparable bond, despite risking the gods' wrath. They are trained by the center Chiron in the arts of war and medicine, but when word comes that Helen of Sparta has been kidnapped, all the heroes of Greece are called upon to lay siege to Troy in her name. Seduced by the promise of a glorious destiny, Achilles joins their cause, and torn between love and fear for his friend Patroclus follows. Little do they know that the cruel fates will test them both, as never before, and demand a terrible sacrifice. So pardon me if I say some of the names wrong in this. I know I'm Greek, but sometimes some of these names look very confusing, and even I don't know how to pronounce them. And I should know, because so many Greeks even have trouble pronouncing my own name. I absolutely love this book. It is so great, and I'm going to go into why and what all the things I loved about it. But it is essentially a homosexual spin on the tale of Achilles and relating to his best friend Patroclus. So it's essentially how the relationship between the two of them develops through their friendship and into their adulthood. Though this book is called The Song of Achilles, it is told from the point of view of Patroclus. And I think in this case, it is better to see it from his point of view, from his perspective, because he's not the person who has this great destiny upon them. Achilles has this prophecy that is foretold about him. And I feel like if he were the one narrating, we would have had definitely a different point of view in terms of how sometimes he's not so humble, sometimes he is, and his personality is kind of conflicting sometimes because of the choices that he has to make throughout the book. That I think Patroclus' point of view is really just on one path. He has one thing in mind and that is that he just wants Achilles to live forever and to be with Achilles forever. So I like that it was told from his point of view because he's not as big of a character in the story of Troy. So you can see it from a sort of an unbiased perspective. I like the backstory of Achilles and Patroclus' relationship. We go back quite a bit to even before Patroclus goes to Achilles' kingdom. We see what happens to Patroclus and why he was exiled from his father's kingdom, how all the men came together to ask for Helen's hand in marriage, and when Helen did choose one of them, how they all sort of swore an oath that they would protect Helen if anything were to happen to her. It's like they knew that something bad was going to happen. I think that the author took a great risk in writing about this friendship because it's not very commonly told anymore. It was written about in the Iliad, which is the story that Homer wrote that leads up to the siege of Troy. And Achilles and Patroclus are in it, but Patroclus is not as big of a character, and it is not told that Achilles and Patroclus are lovers. And I really like that Madeline Miller did that with this because it brings out a great sort of LGBTQ thematic to a classic tale that you would never thought of. Apparently there are scholars who've been debating for a long time whether Achilles and Patroclus were in fact lovers because they were such close friends. I enjoyed when the narrative would come across other legendary heroes and myths of Greek legend, like Odysseus is mentioned, of course, because he is involved with the Battle of Troy. He's the one who comes up with the Trojan horse idea, and he is the main character of the sequel to the Iliad, the Odyssey, which Homer wrote about Odysseus' journey home. And we see Odysseus in this book, and he has not a huge role but he's very prominently there and you can kind of tell he's he's a bit witty and sort of sneaky sometimes but he's not a bad guy and i really like that we came across him we also come across chiron who if you guys have watched my percy jackson reviews recently was also in percy jackson and chiron is this like legendary age-old centaur who's different from all other centaurs because he's more civilized and more knowledgeable. He's the son of Kronos and he teaches Achilles and Patroclus the arts of medicine and herbology and fighting not really because Achilles already is predestined to be the greatest fighter ever and Chiron doesn't need to help him with that and Patroclus doesn't want to fight. 
but Patroclus does learn from Chiron, the arts of medicine, and because Patroclus ends up being a great asset during the Trojan War because he's helping in the medical tent quite a lot. There's a big disparity between the Achilles of before the Trojan War and the Achilles during the war because when Achilles is with Patroclus before the war he is very loving and he's very innocent and he's very humble and even though he's this great being and Patroclus thinks so highly of him and everyone who meets him thinks so highly of him because he's so beautiful and so talented he's still very humble and very loving, but during the Trojan War that changes very drastically because of the circumstances that Achilles is under and he gets in a fight with Agamemnon and Achilles' pride is wounded and he becomes very vengeful towards Agamemnon and he doesn't care what happens to the rest of the army and the rest of the people there because he just wants Agamemnon to apologize to him and until that happens and his pride is returned to him, he doesn't care about anyone else except for Patroclus. And Patroclus notices this drastic change. And it's so awful to see how the war changed such an amazing boy, amazing man. And he could have been great, but this his pride was his downfall in this case. And Patroclus was a great point of view into the disparity between those two kids. Because he always loved Achilles, but he started to kind of have some doubts about him when he began to be so prideful during the Troy siege. Achilles, though, in this book is in a relationship with Patroclus. He does, in fact, marry and have a son by another princess named, I believe, Daedonia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name right, but this is all in the secret. And once the son is born, Achilles' mother, who is a sea goddess, Thetis, she decides to take the boy and raise him in the sea with her. And as a result, Achilles' son, who Achilles never meets, but he comes to the Trojan War after Achilles dies, his name is Pyrrhus, and he is very different from Achilles. Achilles who before the Trojan War was very loving and humble and bright and joyful. And Pyrrhus is the exact opposite. He is very cruel and spiteful and he may be beautiful, but he's a cold beauty, whereas Achilles was warm and bright. And it's very strange how there's such a disparity between father and son, but it's because of where they were raised. Achilles was raised by his father above ground in the mortal world even though he was half god and Pyrrhus who's not even half god because his father was only half and his mother was pure mortal he is raised with the sea goddesses and as a result becomes almost like them cruel and unjust and you see for yourself how terrible he is in comparison to his father now at the end of the book there's quite a few tidbits and I like when authors do that because it gives more insight into how the book was made. Any other short works that the author has created that goes with the story. So at the back there's just like an about the author section. There's a whole list of gods and immortals that are important in the book. There is a Q&A with Gregory Maguire, who's the author of the book Wicked, and that's pretty cool because I love that book series. Uh, there's some discussion questions which are always fun to read and sort of ask yourself. And then there are two author essays that she writes. One is called A City Old and Buried But from Far From Dead, which is when she goes actually to Troy and see what it's like nowadays, the ruins of Troy, which is so cool. And the other essay is called Stealing Hercules Club. So it's pretty much just a bit of like telling us that it's okay to use a bit of past history's works like Homer's The Iliad, like she did for this book, in order to write this story. But you have to kind of, you don't have to remain true to it in full aspect, but I think she may remain quite true to it. And I don't think she really made any ambiguous sort of statements by stating that perhaps Achilles and Patroclus were lovers because that did happen back in Greek times, back in ancient Greece, so I wouldn't put it past them.
But seriously guys, pick up The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. It's the winner of the 2012 Orange Prize for Fiction. So it's a really, really good book. If you like war, love stories, maybe some LGBTQ, it's so awesome and I highly recommend you guys pick it up soon. My Twitter and my website are linked in the bio below. Hit subscribe if you guys like what you see and want to see more videos by me. I'm Evie, the Greek goddess of great reading, and until next time, guys, keep reading.